Well, the days of your apples turning brown could be over. After years of development, the first genetically modified non-browning apples will soon go on sale in the United States. And they could be here as soon as February 1st. This is crazy as I researched it because as a mom, I hand the sliced apples to my kids. So scientists have developed, actually genetically engineered these cow apples, where essentially they've turned off that enzyme. People don't want their Gravenstein apple turning into a Frankenstein apple. So, so. I'm not so much concerned about genetically modified foods, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> Apparently, these are not, it's not being advertised as GMO either on the packaging. Ah, so that's, and, uh, and there were the a lot rub. of people concerned saying that does that meet all the uh, laws? Right. Or well, it may not be an acronym you're aware of yet, but the scientific community is touting 2017 as the year of CRISPR. But what nature could have created, we can create in a single generation. This shows the enormous industrial engine of biology. And just as we can modify mice to run much further, we could modify humans to run much further. Scientists have found a way to grow human organs in animals. Yes, you heard that right. Human cells have successfully grown inside a pig embryo. For the first time, scientists are seeing how our cells grow and interact inside an animal. This pig, the first known chimera. But it is just a step toward a goal. The boundaries between what it means to be human and what it means to be non-human uh, can become quite blurred. We now have the opportunity to redesign evolution, to create what might be called rational evolution. We can now use these cast proteins to um, make cuts in any DNA sequence, which allows us to mutate or edit those DNA sequences. So, in a sense, what you can do is modify and manipulate. Now, these westerly swells are record high. Gail Lamar has watched the waves roll into Half Moon Bay every day for the last 30 years. Changing. It's really changing. The Monterey buoy recorded 34 feet. That's the highest it's ever recorded. We've been here for about five years, and this is the highest we've seen it yet. The river is, I think, twice as wide as it was last week. And I have never seen it crest or make the river th this tall before. The water had such force, it shattered windows and ruined the floors. The surveillance video captured this, a rogue wave that came up over the breakers and straight into and through one of the restaurant's first floor window. Just a lot of rain. We've never had this much rain in that short a period before. Thousands of birds found dead in the Yolo Bypass. A CBS 13 viewer sent us these pictures and asked us what is causing this disturbing phenomenon. Look, it's just shocking to see that kind of die-off. I've never seen anything like that before. Walking along the Yolo Bypass, Lawrence Campling saw this about a week ago. Easily hundreds of bodies, hundreds of birds all dead along the side of this flooded field. More than 3,700 American coots, birds that look like ducks, all of them dead.
people here describe the impact of the storm as something that they have never seen like it before in their lives, completely leveling homes. It literally looks like God took half of the mobile home park and threw it across the street into the woods. Chilean authorities say they have never seen anything on this scale. The wildfires across the country are the worst in Chile's modern history. Virtually every building, every home, every school, every shop has been reduced to rubble. Well, good morning. The coast of Massachusetts is no stranger to harsh weather, but usually not like this. My neighbors said this is the worst it's been in 20 years except for Sandy. To Peru now, which remains in a state of emergency after two days of heavy flooding. A mysterious boom felt across the county. We got calls and messages from people who said they felt a huge shaking around mid-afternoon. There were no reports of earthquakes that would have caused that. Today they confirm no aircraft reached supersonic speeds. So bottom line, even the experts don't really know. New at 6 o'clock, a mystery that a lot of people are now talking about on Facebook. Around 8 o'clock last night, people from the Mount Holly area all the way down to Rock Hill, well, they apparently heard a really loud boom. Yeah, the boom was loud enough to rattle nerves. This is the third time in the past week the town's been rocked by loud booms. Residents say there's something strange happening in the uptown area, and they want answers. On multiple occasions, they've heard a loud boom, some even reporting the sound follows a flash of light. There's a lot of speculation as to what could be causing these booms. Maybe a blown transformer, fireworks, or some sort of activity that's taking place along the river. But those who've heard this noise say it's just too powerful to be any of that. And it sounded like a bomb went off underneath our house, rattled the whole house. It was the loudest sound I can think of without an actual explosion going off. This has been happening since the start of December, and nobody has a clue as to what it is. There is an invisible killer out in space, and it's draining the life right out of galaxies. A group of Australian scientists is on the case. shouldn't be surprised. You know, a lot of times when, when these things happen, especially when there is um, a spiritual component of it, the reason why I stand for, for life is because I believe God created all life, and we live uh, in a world that is, is anti-God in a lot of ways, so we can't be surprised when certain things get more played than others, um, but that doesn't deter us from the truth. Uh, one of the things that I said was that we um, have to stand firm on truth, no matter if people like it or not, or if it gets it gets play on the air or not. It doesn't change um, what's important. It doesn't change what is true. A Bible found untouched in Bass Chapel at William Carey University gains attention on social media. And we walked in the front of the, of the chapel, and as you'll see from the photograph, if you can remember, we could look straight up the aisle, and you could see the large stained glass window was missing. He noticed something sitting on a table under the window, a Bible. But that that Bible withstood the storm and it is a symbol for believers like myself and the people at Cary and it was there and it was there to remind us that God is our constant companion. The Bible was open to Psalm 46, a verse dear to him. God is our refuge and strength, a helper who is always found in times of trouble and therefore it was just a, it was a, a surreal moment. It was an, awe, an awe-inspiring moment perhaps is the best way to put it. Well, I tell you what, uh, I've always felt the need to pray and you know that. So I would say that uh, the office is so powerful that you need God even more. We're believers and it brings us great comfort and joy to know that our God is there with us and our God reminds us that he's there with us. But as it is written, let your gentleness be evident to all. Why are we here? 
What does it mean to stand together, to be part of this incredible movement, to face criticism, ridicule, laws and lawmakers that diminish and erode our most basic rights? It means to protect and to promote the most precious gift in the world, the gift of life.